Um, thank you. I just want to quickly address one thing before answering that. Uh, his appointment, and because you were alluding to what you called abuses of, uh, or sorry, my Professor Ladan was alluding to what he called abuses of the political function of uh, the chief of staff in terms of uh, people calling, calling them cabal. Uh, Professor Gambari is not going to solve the problem of cabals in government. Uh, in political science, we have what we call the iron law of oligarchy, that any organization, no matter how democratic they may have started, precisely because authorities have to be delegated, there will be competition by various centers of power to capture access or to exercise disproportionate influence. So a small clique will always become triumphant in that, which means that any time you talk about government, you talk about struggle for state capture, you talk about cabal, everyone will be cabal. Sooner than later, he will also become part of the cabal. That's, you will have to exercise disproportionate influence. The other thing I want to mention is that I think we should also be careful not to expect too much from him. The president has a team of economic advisors. He has a minister of uh, finance. He has people with task force on um, COVID-19 and all that. His job, as far as I can make it, is to advise. He looks at some of the positions that are being presented to the president and will be able probably to streamline them, uh, make it narrow down the options. And sometimes he doesn't need to do all these things alone. He has his own staff. He can use consultants to look at some of the proposals that are being sent to the president and then be able to help advise the president. I think also he's in a position, depending again on how much of confidence he gains of the president, he's in a position to tell the president the you know, the bitter truth, what we can call the bitter truth in a nice way. He's a diplomat. And, you know, we say a diplomat is somebody who tells you to go to hell and you'll be looking forward to when the journey will start. So that will, he will bring that to bear. He will be in a position to tell the president something he may, you know, may be uncomfortable. And as a diplomat, probably know how to put it in such a nice way that the president will not feel bad. But I think I want us to, you know, quickly disabuse our minds that the chief of staff will run the the the, the government as a in you know, as a as a, as a kind of a king, an emperor. No, he advises. It doesn't mean that being the uh, uh, the chief of staff doesn't me, 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 uh, make the roles of the other functionaries and aides of the president redundant. No, they also come with their proposals, and then a, a smart one will then be in a position to streamline what he sends to the president, because there's just so much a president can read at a time. And then he will be able to break these things down, summarize them for the, to the president, and present them in a way that he simplifies the, you know, the opportunity for the president to take options. He's not the one to, to simply run the economy. You know, there are economic advisors, he has minister of uh, finance, a whole lot, a bunch of aides. He's not going to displace them but he's going to be in a position to look at their proposals and streamline them for the president to take a decision.